you've brought home a new crested gecko and you're super excited about it but you're not sure how to handle it and maybe it's crazy and maybe it's not this one's not crazy anymore but um if it is crazy this is the video for you today we're gonna go over all of my handling tips we're gonna go over how to tame them down and get them calm and uh We've got lots of cool information. I'm Danielle with Danielle's Critters, and I love educating and sharing beautiful animals with people, and I hope you'll stick around to enjoy this video. Oh, and in case you're wondering, this is Butter, and she was named before we learned that she uh, actually fires up like underneath all pink. She's not gonna let me show you. But she is not quite as yellow as we thought she was. Uh, she gets this really pink underglow to her. And uh, she is a fairly uh, um, plain uh, gecko with a few Dalmatian spots. And interestingly enough, we've paired her with a Harlequin male, and she's produced a lot of Harlequins. But they've, ha they've all had a lot of Dalmatian spots, even though the male has none. So I actually have a spotty boy now, and we're starting a spotted project this year, and I'm hoping to have some really nice Dalmatians come out of it. And I know that she's not a great Dalmatian, but uh, because her babies do already have a lot of spots, uh, even on that Harlequin base, I think that she'll make great Dalmatians with an actual Dalmatian male. So we'll, we'll find out this year, hopefully. And I'm, I'm really excited about that project. So just to introduce you to Butter, obviously Butter is not a good example for um, showing you what it's like to handle a jumpy crazy crested gecko because she forgot how to do that and she's been really really calm oftentimes even my calm geckos are a little jumpy on camera and then it's a little hard to control them but today she is like i'll just chill here and that's cool the first thing that i think is important for people to remember is that even though the crested gecko doesn't seem to be the most intelligent animal on the planet they do each have their own personalities and because of that you need to remember that they'll always have their personalities. They might get used to handling, and some of them will do really, really well with handling. Um, in fact, I think most of them do if you take the time to make them feel comfortable with it. But um, they're always still gonna have their own personality, and you have to kind of work with that rather than try to fight that. Um, they are a living animal and can have their own opinions. Uh, this is Spook. She's also apparently just going to chill today. Um, I promise that we'll find somebody who's jumpy to help us um, demonstrate what you need to do when your gecko is jumping. But apparently and not Spook yet either. So the next thing that you need to remember after personality is that you need to remain calm. And sometimes this can be really hard, especially in the beginning, when your baby is jumping all over the place and you are trying to make sure that it doesn't go somewhere that it's not supposed to. Um, being calm is going to help you keep the, cal the gecko calm because it's definitely going to be jumpier if, um, if you're not calm, if you're scrambling after it, it's definitely gonna feel like you are a predator trying to get it. Now I feel Ivory uh, about to jump. She's got the little frog legs which is super easy to see with her no tail, so like the little frog butt. And uh, she's, she's definitely thinking about, about jumping. We'll see if she actually does. Um, this girl has produced some really beautiful babies with our boy Spike, and um, I paired them again recently for that. She might jump on my face. <laughs> so you'll wanna remain calm, and that is a really important factor about making sure that you are in control of the situation or that you can collect your gecko once it's landed on the floor um, with fair ease. Um, well, you don't want to purposely allow them to land on the floor, especially from high up. It does happen sometimes and they are very durable. I think it's that whole arboreal thing, um, but you wanna make sure that um, you aren't chasing after them and scaring them. Um, Every positive interaction is going to help you in the future, but every negative interaction is also going to hurt you. So you got to try to make sure that you're doing the positive experiences. So if it does land on the ground, you want to bend over calmly and, and scoop it up calmly.
no matter what size the gecko is that you brought home with you, you should make sure that you give it at least a week all by itself. And you, this is like its acclimation period. Um, you can come by the enclosure so that it's it's getting used to your presence, but you don't want to reach in and grab it unless you absolutely have to. Um, sometimes you have to for maintenance and care. Um, but instead you just wanna give it that week off. And if it's eating well after that week, then you can start the handling session. I don't recommend that you handle them before they're eating well. Um, for crested geckos, a week usually is plenty of time. Sometimes for gargoyle geckos, they take a little longer to settle in. In case you're watching this video and you actually have a gargoyle gecko, that's a good thing to know. So when you, once they are ready for you to start handling, then you want to start with how you're approaching them. It is important that you make them feel like you are a friend rather than that you are a prey or that you are a predator who's trying to prey upon them. So try to avoid reaching down and grabbing them. Um, the reaching down and grabbing is going to be a lot more predator like. So you want to come from the side if you can and you want to do a scooping motion where you're bringing your hand under them. where you're bringing your hand under them <laughs> and scooping them rather than grabbing. Grabbing often makes them uncomfortable and they'll get even squirmier if they're grabbed. So open hands work a lot better and being prepared to catch is better than squeezing them or making them feel trapped. The making them feel trapped seems to make them nervous and uncomfortable and is gonna increase the issues that you have with handling rather than make it so they get used to it and um, some of them even seem to enjoy it, but um, it does take take patience and effort. Oh, quick interrupt in there. Uh, I forgot something really, really important. Uh, crested geckos are fairly nervous little creatures, and when they drop their tail, they lose it forever. This one lost its tail when it was a big, just a, a tiny, tiny hatchling. It was actually in the egg bin with another gecko, and I was showing it off. It was something that I had done numerous times before, and I felt uh, confident in doing it. And uh, I was showing it off on camera. So um, then both baby crested geckos jumped in opposite directions, and then this one felt like it was being chased, because it was. I was totally chasing after it to catch it. <laughs> I managed to catch both baby geckos and get them into their baby bins, um, but this one lost its tail. And it was actually my first tail loss ever. I've only lost two tails in the two, just over two years that I've been doing this. So um, if you your gecko has its tail and you don't want it to lose its tail, you definitely don't want to chase it around its enclosure. If it feels like you're chasing it, it will probably let go of its tail. And that response is uh, directly related to nature so their tails meant to come off and then it sits there wiggling so that it distract it distracts a predator and then the gecko can get away but uh, you don't really want to be the predator that your gecko is trying to escape so um, definitely don't chase it around its enclosure and uh, if it does decide to leave its enclosure then you want to uh, approach slowly and or, um, if it is like running around its enclosure, I would just close the door and come back in a few minutes. And when they jump to the floor, just calmly bend over and pick them up. Don't make them feel like they're being chased. You just got to use that scooping motion and uh, do so gently and with confidence, but without the panic and scramble that can easily happen when you feel like you've lost your gecko on the floor. Um, this can, uh, other pets can exasperate that feeling. So like if you have a cat or a dog that rushes over when you drop your gecko, um, you want to make sure that you still remain calm because it will be easier to catch your gecko and easier to make it not a frightening experience. So uh, um, the next step is to be prepared for them to jump. And you've seen me do that a lot, even with the girls that weren't that jumpy. This is Snowflake, who is apparently feeling jumpier today than the other girls. And um, so having that hand in front where they're going to jump is your um, biggest helper. Um, you can also face them towards you so that they're jumping on you instead of um, jumping all over. And remember that you're always trying to scoop rather than squeeze or capture. 
you want it to feel more like they still have some control so that they are still remaining calm even as they're jumping around. <laughs> She's going to be very helpful for showing you some of the tips and tricks today. So, uh, she's not actually stressed out and she's just jumping for exploratory purposes, uh, from, from her behavior, um, rather than being as stressed and trying to escape. So you want to keep handling really slow, slow, and you want to keep it in short, consistent bursts, especially if you have a baby. So rather than holding for 30 minutes today and none at all for the rest of the week, you want to do like five minute handling sessions every day to get the animal used to it. Okay, Snowflake, let's go back. So I will admit that I've been cheating a little bit by picking adults who are usually a lot calmer. Uh, I do think I woke this one up though, so it's all like a little groggy. <laughs> um, regular handling of your crested gecko, even at a small size, is what will get you a gecko that's really calm and I can understand that if you think your gecko hates handling then you don't do it in fact my leopard gecko seems to really hate it and I don't really force it upon her I have plenty of animals that I can handle um, anytime that I want so because uh, she doesn't seem to like it I leave her alone and if that's what you've chosen to do that's that's fantastic however I do think that if you choose to create a bond with your crested gecko and get them used to handling, then that's also acceptable. But you just want to start slow and try to end every session on a positive note. So uh, one way to do this is that before they have a chance to panic, you put them back into their enclosure after you've held them for a little while. This lets them know that the experience was scary, but was not didn't actually harm them any. And um, then that gives you the opportunity to... Um, start fresh again tomorrow with another hopefully positive experience. Now the final thing I wanted to talk about was hand feeding and this gets an interesting amount of controversy. Um, so hand feeding is where you mix up a little bit of Pangea and you either put it on your finger or you put it on a spoon but you offer the food while you're handling your gecko. And a lot of people will tell you that if you do this then your gecko will become spoiled and they won't eat food in their enclosure. And I think that part of the reason this, this myth has come about is from antidotal, ev antidotal evidence um, that they're get, they hand fed their gecko and then their gecko don't eat it in its enclosure. But it could be that they hand fed their gecko, their gecko was full and missed a meal or two afterwards. And that's actually completely normal. It's really common for the geckos to eat once or twice a week, even though you're offering food more often than that. And... Um, I don't think that a healthy gecko will starve to death as long as it's able to find its food. So if you put a little gecko like this into a ginormous enclosure and it never finds its food, then it, then it might starve to death. Um, and as long as it's alone. So I've heard of a lot of uh, crested geckos starving to death because they were kept in a pair. And uh, the stronger, bigger baby outcompeted the little baby and kept it from, its, from getting food. So that also happens. But um, I don't think hand feeding a healthy gecko who lives in an appropriate size enclosure and is offered food regularly in its enclosure is going to hurt anything at all. Um, and it does create a positive bonding experience. So each positive experience you give that gecko is going to give it a great opportunity to be calm and to chill with you in the future. So a few more tips just because I like to be thorough about everything. Um, the hand walking technique works really well for crested geckos. And um, that's just moving your hands to give them like an endless treadmill. And then um, you definitely want to pay attention to those legs for when they're preparing to jump rather than walk. And um, remembering that they're going to be moving in a forward direction. Usually, especially with babies, this works really well because they don't switch directions all that fast. So you just keep them moving in the direction. And uh, changing their orientation can help change their direction that they're planning on going. Um, although you can see that this one here is, is naturally figuring out where it wants to go and, and moving in that direction. Um, 
I haven't used this with crested geckos, but um, when we were talking to a guy about training giant day geckos, which are known for being a lot more flighty than crested geckos, um, he talked about them being um, nervous about eye contact. And that if you have a gecko who's particularly nervous, then you can remove the eye contact as part of the the um, uh, part of the equation by lifting them up over your head, and then they'll calm down because they're not seeing your eyes, and then that can help you move on to positive experiences with them. Um, obviously, this guy wasn't really concerned about my eyes. He is not acting in a predator prey fashion at all, and is. Just leisurely exploring. It's always interesting when the geckos make you a liar. So I have not handled these geckos on a real regular basis. We did handle some of them this week at the show um, with other people. Um, but uh, with a, over 150 geckos, you can't handle them on a regular basis. It just doesn't work out real well. Um, so these guys here are fairly calm on their own at this moment in time anyway. Um, but the last time I tried to record a video where I was having crested geckos show off, they were jumping all over the place and I ended up doing it in the light box instead of in front of the wall. <laughs> so you never know exactly what you're going to get when you're dealing with live animals. One last comment about the personality. So just like uh, they have different personalities to start out with, uh, you will also have uh, different learning curves, and you might have a gecko who gets handled uh, a couple times a week, and then they're calmed down right away, or you might have a gecko that takes months to get all calmed down, and you just have to remember that they have their own personality, and you have to be patient and considerate with that, and work with them a little bit at a time. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it presented some helpful things. Um, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be working with our grumpy um, gargoyle gecko, whose name is V. He um, makes a lot of noise when he's handled, and he shakes his whole body. Uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't do the sit-still thing very well at all. He usually jumps and scrambles away and um, can make for a lot of negative handling experiences because he's so scared. And then he's also threatened to bite. He's never actually bitten me, but he'll open up his mouth and um, sometimes snap even at me. So I'm going to work with him on video, and I'm going to do that in short handling sessions on a regular basis. So first it'll start out a couple of times a week, and then I'm going to move to um, every day. And um, when it, I'm going to record how that, how that works out. Um, and how long it takes for me to get him to be calm. I have no idea what the answer is going to be. I've never tried to work with him before. Um, he's a beautiful, beautiful striped gecko, and I had hoped that um, a breeder would buy him. The, the fact that he doesn't like to be handled is, is not usually a big deal for a breeder because you're not really handling your geckos on a regular basis the same way a pet owner would be doing. So... Um, yeah, that's coming up, and uh, hopefully it'll be a really cool like case study in, in all my handling techniques, and, and I'll update you guys on how that's going out. And um, hopefully it'll be an interesting video to watch on YouTube in a couple of weeks. Hopefully it won't take more than a couple of weeks, but I have no idea. He did stay home from the show. <sighs> he did stay home from the show this past week, specifically so that we could do this YouTube video. So hopefully it'll work out great. Oh, if you want more great creator content, I'd love for you to click on the video after this. Um, and I'd love it if you subscribed, left a comment, like this video, all of those things are, uh, make me so happy. And um, I'm really hoping to grow Danielle's Critters YouTube channel into something really big and interesting, educational, and hopefully at least a little, little bit entertaining. Um, nope, that gecko was probably... Oh no, it's gonna walk. <laughs>